Hey guys, today we're going to show you how to change the chain on a chainsaw. I have a Pullin Pro 18 inch chainsaw that I bought at Walmart for about $125, but it's basically the same with any chainsaw. Um, this is a very inexpensive chainsaw, but for the, the light work I use it for, it actually is a pretty good buy. It's in its third year now and it's still cutting good. I just keep the chains nice and sharp. But once they do wear out, I replace them quickly because a bad chain will deteriorate your uh, your saw in time. Um, I can sharpen the teeth on the chain to reuse the same chain numerous times. However, in time, the chain will start to become very loose because it stretches out with wear and I simply can't keep it tight enough to change it. So this is why this particular chain has run the course of its lifespan and I'm gonna replace it. Now the only tool that I need to replace my chain with is the chainsaw chain tool that comes with your chainsaw when you buy it. If you lose yours, you can buy one of these online for just a few dollars. It's probably the best place to get it. Just look on Amazon. That way you don't have to waste time going to a store that may or may not have it. But uh, it's all you need. On one end, you have the tool to take off your, your uh, nuts here to take the guard off and replace the chain. And on the other end, you have what looks like a flathead screwdriver, which you can use to tighten or loosen the chain once you have it on there properly. Now, uh, as far as chains go, even though the saws are pulling, they do make pulling chains. I just buy whatever I have the easiest access to. Sometimes I'll buy them on Amazon. I bought these chains last night at Lowe's because I knew I was going to cut wood today and I didn't have the two days to wait for Amazon, Amazon shipment. So they're Oregon brand, but they work just the same, just as good as pulling as long as they're the proper length. And these are 18 inches. I got a two pack at Lowe's for $28. They were $22 or $21 individually, but they had two packs for 28. So I figured, well, why not spend an extra $7 and get two chains? Now, this is very easy, but there's a couple things you can do incorrectly to really get yourself in, in a hang up. Now, the first thing, is when you take your new chain out of the box, it'll come all coiled up like a snake. You wanna uncoil this thing and you don't wanna just shake it loose because you'll knot it and you'll never uncoil it. So what you do is you just very slowly start to pull it apart with the tips of your fingers and you see you've got all these multiple little, what looks like knots and coils in it. You gotta see which way the chain wants to go to get it out. And that's only going to work well if you go slowly. See? And now we're done. If I would have tried to pull that apart real fast, all those looked like it had four or five separate knots in it. They would have bunched up and I would have had a mess on my hands. So now, number two, once you've got your chain taken apart, when, when you put the chain on, the chainsaw will actually work in such a way that it pulls the sharp edge of the teeth into the bottom of the saw. Sometimes when I'm out cutting wood, I'm in such a hurry to change the, the uh, saw, the, uh, the saw's chain, or if, when I'm getting ready to cut wood, that I, I won't pay enough attention and I'll put the chain on backwards. It happens, folks, and I've been using a chainsaw for 25 years at least. So what I often like to do is before I take the old one off is line the new one up, and as you can see, I'm holding this one backwards, so I'm simply gonna flip it around. I line the new one up, so that the teeth are in the same direction as the chain that's on because I know it's on correctly. So once I have it lined up, I'll simply lay it off to the side and it's ready to go on. Now, this is the easiest part. You simply use your end of the tool that matches up to the, to the bolts here, or the nuts on the bolts. And I want to give you a word of caution here. You see there's grass down here. It's not too long. I just mowed recently. But you don't want to lose these in the grass or out in the woods if you're in the woods. I usually do this in the garage. But I'm doing it out here today because we have better lighting and I want you to get a good look at what we're doing. So then you lift this guard off. I turn this upside down. And then I store my nuts right there. I simply pull this down here so this loosens this up, gives me enough slack to take this off. And, and uh, then I lay this off to the side. All right, and I take my bar. I keep everything facing the same direction as it is. If it ain't broke, don't break it. 
So I try not to screw things up and get everything all backward and stuff. And when you have this open and your guards off, you can clean any of this mess out of here if you want. So then I take my new chain and I put it on the bar, same direction in which the old chain was on because I knew it was on there correctly. So I know I'm not putting my chain on backward. Make sure it spins. Look at that. That's nice and smooth. That old chain was getting all grid, gridded up and bent. And it just wasn't cutting very good. And then it got stretched out to the point to where it just wasn't effective. I didn't want to bring about any. I mean, I have a very inexpensive saw here. Like I said, 125 bucks. But I'll use it as long as I can use it for. I mean, I fantasize about getting a big steel farm boss. Until that time, I'm going to have to make do with this. So I want to take good care of it. Now, once I put that on there, I want to make sure the bar is flush with the saw. I want to get my nuts. And I'm going to point out to you on this cover, you see this little niche coming out right here? I want to line this up with this hole on the bottom of the bar when I put this back on because that's what's going to allow me to tighten and loosen my chain as I need to with the end of my, my um, tool. But now I will tell you, mine's a little bit bent, so it's a little bit tricky. Um, I hit a big hard knot or something in, in a red oak log back there in a crotch section, and I kind of did some damage there. So I've got a mine's a little bit finicky. But then I simply I want to make sure that I'm holding my bar flush, and I'll even hold the saw down with my knees. So what I'm doing here. And I'm going to show you again before I start screwing that on there. Is I'm with this hand, I'm actually pulling up in this direction to keep this chain taut. I don't want it to be loose. I don't want any slack. You know, if you've got too much slack in your chainsaw, your or in your chain, your chain will jump, and then you run the damage of banging the teeth up and bending the teeth when it's down here on this sprocket. And you take a brand new chain that you can use to cut a lot of wood with and you have it jump because it's too loose and then all of a sudden you can't cut anything with it. Now before I tighten this up all the way, I will actually pull out with quite a bit of force here. That's why I'm making sure to hold my saw down with my knee. And then I tighten these back up. Make sure it's nice and secure. I can let off of this now because this is tight enough. The guard itself is actually holding this down. And then, as you can see, and this, by the way, the whole time I'm cutting wood, I keep this in my back pocket in case if I need to take my chain off if it jumps or something or if I need to work on this. But as you can see, there's no play in this new chain now. It's, it's just loose enough to where it can make its way around the uh, bar and around the sprocket. Okay, there, I've got the brake on. Now the brake's off. There we go. It's on, it's threaded in, it's in its track and its groove. But there's, look at that, it's almost like a bowstring. Nice and taut, whereas the old one you'll remember was hanging down a couple of inches. It was just of no use anymore, no effective use. That's all there is to it. Um, if I wasn't showing you how to do this for the purposes of making a video, I mean, I could have done this in three minutes. So it's a simple process, one you can do yourself. So I hope that helps you. I hope you learned something from this video. And if you did, please subscribe to our channel, Homesteading Off The Grid.